Ooh. This is the Meta Quest 3. Fancy headset from Meta. It has what everybody wants, these gorgeous lenses. And today we're going to be benchmarking it. This is not a review about the headset, about its features, compared to a Quest 2, compared to other products. Don't care. This is about CPUs, specifically eye racing. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we go. Six processors being tested. On the left side, we have the AMD AM5 platform. This is new for AMD as of last year. We've got two processors here. One is the entry-level 7600X. I think you could also easily say these numbers represent the 7600 non-X. I think those are interchangeable. Um, and then beneath it, we have the 7800X3D. This is what everyone claims to be the best gaming processor. I don't know. We'll see. Um, in the middle, we've got the two Intel processors. Now, these are LGA 1700. Intel's had this platform for a few years now. Um, the bottom, we see the 12600K. I would consider this to be entry level for simulators. It's overclockable because it has that K. I won't be overclocking in this video. Um, that's something you guys can refer to other sources or do on your own. And then above it is the 13700K. This is going to be probably your bang for buck best Intel processor right now. I know the 14th generation's out. If you've seen other reviews, they're just not worth it. If you can pay less for a 13700K or KF, that's the better deal. And then on the right-hand side, we've got AM4. Um, you can still buy these processors new and at pretty good pricing, unlike Intel 10th and 11th generation, which are uh, now have inflated cost because they're no longer manufactured. So people are uh, sitting on inventory and selling a premium for it. Um, so we're, we're testing the 5800X 3D, which I guess will go down as one of the best processors of all time. And then beneath it, is the 5600 vanilla non-X. Just like the uh, 7600, I don't think you need to pay extra for the X variant. Okay, switching things up uh, to the platforms themselves. If you're curious about the details, here's what the test bench looks like. Here are the system specifications. I'm not gonna run through all these details, but I am using on the AMD platform, the PBO settings, uh, Game Boost, you know, just the easy one click in the BIOS options. Same thing with the Intel platform. The Gigabyte board has, I think it's enhanced CPU performance. It just makes all uh, cores run at the same clock, a higher clock. Um, but I'm not overclocking. This is basically stock set up with XMP and Expo memory timings. Um, I'm also using an EK3060 RAD cooler, so thermals are an issue, and using a 3080 Ti, great deal on the used marketplace if you're looking for something, just be cautious, like it runs hot and it's power hungry, it's kind of crazy actually, it's similar to a 4070 and a 4070 Ti for performance on the NVIDIA side. Okay, back to the Quest 3. Here's the headset again. Um, just a quick kind of re recap or summary of what's going on here. I find this thing very uncomfortable. Not only is the gasket, I find this to be uncomfortable, kind of like a raw face cloth, but the head strap itself is terrible for me. I had to get this, uh, it was an AMVR head strap. It's meant for a Quest 2. It doesn't fit like it's supposed to. But otherwise, I found this thing unwearable. So that's one note. But you can kind of see into the lenses. I don't have the headset on right now. But the lenses are very pretty. They're not ringed um, like you have seen in other headsets like the Index, the Quest 2, things like that. So uh, they're really pretty. I'm not going to be using virtual desktop or Wi-Fi for connection. I'm trying to limit the um, variables in doing performance testing. So I am using a uh, link cable. You do not have to get the official one from Meta, from Facebook. That is not required. I just happened to buy a used Quest 2, and uh, he had the official cable. So I, uh, I went with that. Um, so now what we should do is talk about some of the software. With PC VR and using the Oculus app, you can change the refresh rate and the render resolution. I have the refresh rate set to 90 because that would provide the smoothest, uh, smoothest experience for sim racing. 
The render resolution can be dynamic, but that kind of moves all over the place. And this is a CPU focused benchmark. And so I don't want to run 1.5 times super sampling in a giant resolution because that's going to further increase the uh, influence of the GPU on the results. So I'm sticking with just the, the, the native 1.0 resolution. I'm not using Oculus tray tools. Again, I'm trying to remove a layer of software from, from influencing the performance results, but I am using the debug tool that gives me access to two things. One is the MipMap setting, which I turn off. I find there's a performance advantage there. And another thing I do is I disable asynchronous warp. This means that the frame rate won't get cut in half when the headset or the system, the computer system is struggling to maintain that 90 frames per second. It won't just drop to 45 immediately. Um, you also see the bit rate that's, that's there, 500. Again, these are just static settings. I know it's not the best image quality. This benchmark is about CPU analysis. Okay, we're finally here. We're finally inside a benchmark. I'm using replay systems from iRacing. I tested several tracks, but Daytona at night with 50 cars on track. We're running an IMSA field here inside a 911 with four mirrors. Do not kid yourself, mirrors are a huge performance impact. Four, I think, is the most you can possibly do in a car in iRacing. We're inside the 911. This is actually an AI car being driven by Jimmer, uh, and it's even colored like minty, uh, which is kind of cool. Here are the graphic settings I'm gonna be using for the first test here. This is like max. I have some things disabled that everyone should disable like cube maps, but other than that, there's a lot of things cranked here. This is a stress test. It's also gonna stress the video card, so I can't help but fall into a bottleneck, a, some kind of GPU bottleneck. You always have that in VR. It's a huge part of the system's performance, so keep that in mind. In contrast, here are the medium quality settings that I've determined to be, I think, acceptable. There's a few annoying things. I don't like having the world and car set to minus. They get really blocky in the mirrors. Speaking of which, we're, we're still using four mirrors here. That stresses the CPU more so than the video card. So yeah, so yeah I think that these are decent settings. Okay, so I'm going to send the uh, benchmark up top here and bring in the first bar graph. Here we go. Bigger is better. Your classic FPS bar graph. What we want to see is all of these bars filled completely to 90. That would be <laughs> the ideal scenario, but uh, this is a very intense and obviously that's not going to happen. I'm guessing, because looking how similar the minimums are between five of the six processors, that's probably an indication of a video card bottleneck. It's hard to tell at this point. We do see an advantage to the 7800X 3D uh, just by a few uh, FPS over the 13700K. I was surprised actually to see the 5800X 3D here ahead of the 7600X, which is on the new AM5 platform. So. I think that's a clear indication that 3D vCache is um, helping in this scenario of Daytona. So what happens when we switch to medium quality, or I guess I wrote middle quality here. Um, so these are much easier settings to run and boom, right away we see the 7800X 3D and the 13700K both almost get to 90 FPS average. They do still experience some minimum frame dips down to 50s, um, which is, again, going to happen around Daytona, especially when you turn towards the infield and back towards the grandstands. Um, this is going to happen. Again, the advantage with the 3D vCache, that 5800X 3D is really showing itself to be a great processor for this scenario. And, uh, yeah, pretty even. I, between the 7600X and the 12600K, uh, a pretty good tussle right there. I thought the 5600 would actually fare better at medium quality around Daytona, but it's just too much happening for that platform. Probably uh, a limitation of the DDR4 and the bandwidth that's available, whereas the X3D can bypass that constraint and resolve a lot of that calculation within the 3DV cache. 
Okay, for the second scenario, I wanted to find something that was more middle of the road, more typical for an iRacing experience. So here we are, Red Bull Ring and Super Formula. This track's a couple years old now, so it's seen some optimizations. A 20-car field is fairly normal for iRacing. This car only has two mirrors, so keep that in mind. And this replay is also uh, taken from a, a live race uh, that I spectated. So these are actual drivers driving around in the Super Formula. Okay, I'm gonna send the benchmark footage up to the top again and bring in a bar chart. And here are the results. This is at max quality. We're seeing a very similar performance between the two leading processors. The 7800X3D seems to have a bit more of a stutter down towards uh, 48 frames per second. Maybe that would be noticeable in actual gameplay, hard to tell. But in the midfield, the 7600X has very similar performance to the 7800X3D. Perhaps that's the fact that there are no, um, there are less mirrors, there are no headlights, there's less objects around this circuit, so maybe the 3 dv cache isn't able to help out as much in this scenario. And then at the bottom, we have the 5600 again, uh, showing fairly competent performance, but definitely at a, uh, a disadvantage compared to the other current generation processors. Okay, so now let's switch things over to medium quality or middle quality as I call it. And wow, I mean, very strikingly similar performance between all of these platforms. Even the 5600 is looking mighty at these quality settings. And I think this reveals two things. Uh, one, that you can tune iRacing to get even a last generation CPU like the 5600 running pretty good. Uh, at, tip, at a typical race, um, which I, you know, compared to Daytona and 50 cars, this, this is more normal. The other thing that this reveals is that uh, there is definitely some FPS drops that are unavoidable. It's either a GPU limitation or just the iRacing uh, physics engine and rendering engine. We're just, we're just running into something that is just dropping the performance. It doesn't matter if you have a hundred dollar processor or a four hundred dollar processor and unfortunately these graphs don't do a good job at showing the headroom that's available as we saw in the last chart we know the 13700k can run much higher graphic quality settings at very small uh, performance decrease and so this type of analysis unfortunately uh, doesn't really show that very well what what headroom is available and I'm looking forward to using Steam VR and Valve Index or another headset to showcase the actual load that's being placed on both the CPU and the GPU so that we can better understand the headroom that's available and the demand that the simulator is placing on those components. So those are the results. Uh, I'm curious what you think. Leave some feedback below, questions, comments, whatever. And like and subscribe because I'm going to be doing triple monitor testing, multiple resolutions as well. You might be able to see that behind me. So uh, stay tuned.